I'm Dana K. White at TheSlobChemsClean.com and I talk about decluttering. And specifically today, I'm gonna to talk about decluttering without getting distracted. So I am more distractible than the average person. I've not been formally diagnosed with ADHD because I haven't tried to be diagnosed. Um, but according to many of you on the internet, uh, you believe that I do have it, which probably, you're probably right. Anyway, um, but I, the one guarantee is that I'm gonna get distracted. And so I have come up with a strategy with a process for decluttering that allows me to know for sure I am going to make progress and only progress even when I get distracted. Okay, so my goal is not to say, don't get distracted, don't get distracted. That's what I used to do. And then I would get distracted anyway. And if I was decluttering using the traditional methods of pulling everything out of a space, of sorting and making piles, if I was doing that, then when I got distracted, I would end up with a bigger mess, which would overwhelm me even more, which would mean that the next time I needed to declutter, I would put it off longer because I was like, no, every time it ends up with a bigger mess. And so then the, the space itself would get more and more cluttered, more and more overwhelming. And it was a bad process. So I came up with a five-step process that helps me break through being overwhelmed and know that I'm only going to make progress. But a lot of times people will ask me, well, what does that look like? You know, I know I'm going to get distracted. So what does that look like? Well, I have some examples that I'm going to share with you today of how this works when I know that I'm gonna get distracted, how do I continually make progress and only progress? So the key to this is that I make a final decision about each item as I remove it from the space, knowing that anything leaving the space is decluttering success. I'm not gonna be done, but I will have decluttered something if anything leaves the space. So one item at a time, final decision by final decision, and then acting on that final decision. So what does it look like? Well, for example, as we were working in our garage, which was just a bunch of random stuff left after we'd gotten most everything put in its place after we moved, as we worked in the garage, I was like, I've just got to plow through, just keep going and progress and only progress. I kept telling myself that. So I came across a card table and I was like, oh, well, I know where I would look first for a card table. I knew exactly where I would look first because I was pretty sure I had looked for it there at some point and it wasn't there. So, all right, I'm going to take this to its space, but it was super dirty, partly because it had been in our garage for a long time. I think it was dirty even before that, before we moved it. So I was like, ugh, this is gross. I don't want to go put this in that place because there's dirt on it and I think maybe some spider webs or whatever. So what does it look like for me to say, well, I've got to make progress and only progress. It means I don't set it aside as something to deal with later. That's how I used to do things. Oh, well, I don't want to go through the process of finding what I need to clean this and then cleaning it and then taking it because that is wasting my time and that's getting distracted, except that it's not because it moves me forward in the process that I am going through. I am getting this out of this space where it's clutter, putting it in its final home. And if I will do that, then I will have successfully decluttered this item because it's not clutter anymore if it's in a defined space where I know I would look for it first, okay? So even though it feels like a distraction for me to tell myself, no, I'm going to clean this off right now. If I will go ahead and I will get what I need and go through the action of cleaning this off, then I can take it to its place and it's done. And I don't have to think about it. I have nothing waiting for me to remember. The other side of the distractibility issue is my forgetfulness. All right. So if I set it aside and say, oh yeah, I'm going to have to do this before I actually go put it in its home. So <laughs> I'll set it aside and do that later. Well, then I get distracted. That stuff is still in the space that I was wanting to get cleaned out, that I was wanting to have free and open so we could park our cars there. It's still sitting there. It's still dirty. And then later I come back to this space and I have to go through this process again of thinking, oh, where would I look for this first? Oh, that's, oh, but it's dirty. And it turns into this endless cycle where things never actually end up getting 
decluttered and done, okay? If I'll take the couple of minutes for me to get it cleaned off, then I can take it to its home and it's done and I don't have to think about it again. And then when I need the card table, it's in the place where I look for it first and it's ready to go. Like it is living the life that it's supposed to live in that space where I'm gonna look for it, ready to go, ready for us to use it. Now I'm gonna talk through a process of things. Okay, this is where some people get really frustrated because, and I understand that, that was me too, because it's this feeling of, oh, well, if I'm gonna take it there now, I then have to do this first to be able to take it there now. And so that's a distraction. And then I have to, to do that, and then I have to do this, and then that's a distraction. But I just remind myself I am moving forward. I am putting things in their final home so that I never have to think about those things again. And that is the thing that moves my house forward in this whole decluttering process, okay? Setting things aside, I am distractible, I will get distracted, and then it's just a bigger mess and it's not actually dealt with. Everything that I put into its final home is decluttering progress that I'm making, okay? Here is what it looks like when it's more than just one item. So as I was decluttering my garage, I opened up this box and I saw, oh, yeah, there are a couple of um, you know copies of monologues and things in there, but there's like a whole stack of books. There was old yearbooks. There were scripts. There were just things that I'm like, yeah, these are actual things that need to go on a bookshelf in my house. And I thought, oh, I don't really have a bookshelf where I would look first for that. But if I had a bookshelf where I would look first for that, it would be in the dog room. For now, I'm calling it the dog room. It's also the room where Reed does the video editing and all that kind of stuff. But in that space, that is where I would look first. Do I have this, oh no, I've looked for books there before. No, but I have to decide something. We were in a house where we didn't have a place for these things. So I go, okay, where's the first place where I would look if I was looking for these scripts? Well, I would look on a bookshelf in there, but there is no bookshelf in there. Oh, okay. Well, I need to take it there now. And then I went, well, you know what? There is a bookshelf by our front door that I thought was going to be this great idea to put it in this little entryway. And yet it has lived, I think, since Christmas with nothing on it. Like we had our Santa Claus pictures of the kids growing up on there at Christmas. And so I thought this is a great place to put it, but it's just been empty. Like it hasn't had any other purpose. And I think that's the bookshelf that used to be in the room that was equivalent of the dog room in our old house. And that's where I, this is the bookshelf where I would look first for these things, but I wouldn't look for it in the entryway. It needs to be. So I say, okay, I'm going to go get that bookshelf and I'm going to take it to that room where I would look first for these on this bookshelf. And I'm going to do, it feels like a distraction, right? Oh, I have to do this before I can actually put these in their home where I would look for them first. But my goal is to put them in their home where I would look for them first and they need the bookshelf to be there to do that. So I go get the bookshelf and I do that. Well, the bookshelf had one, actually two items on it. It had a fake plant and it had a little picture of my husband when he was a kid, whatever. Okay, the picture goes to where pictures go. Okay, we have a spot where we look for pictures. The fake plant, okay, I mean, same difference in that same space. I'm gonna put it on this little table here that's at our front door. Okay, that's its new home. All right, so that has a home. I'm gonna take this bookshelf. I know it feels confusing, okay? But I'm moving forward in all of this process. Everything is going to a final home. Nothing's getting set anywhere temporarily, all right? So I take this bookshelf to the place where I would look for these books on it first in the dining room. I call it the dining room because it used to be their dining room. And sometimes I call it the dog room. It's more dog room than dining room, whatever. Anyway, I know, define the room, right, Dana? So I go take this to put in this space and there's a suitcase there. How did this suitcase end up there? Oh, it's from when we went on vacation and then it was probably sitting out near the laundry room, which is sort of nearby. And then we stuck it in here at the time when somebody was coming over because this is a room that gets closed off. Okay, we can do that. And now it's in this space where I need to put this bookshelf. Well, it feels like a distraction to deal with the suitcase, except that the suitcase has a place to go. I have a place where I look for suitcases first 
And so I take the suitcase to its final destination, which allows me then to put the bookshelf into its final destination in this space, which then allows me to take these books. So that was the original thing that I was clearing out of this space that we need to use to park our car. So it can't have boxes of books in there. Now I have its final destination available. Okay, so it feels like it's a distraction, but each of those things is going to a final home. Nothing is being done temporarily. Okay, it, oh, it, yes, it's frustrating. But at the same time, now the suitcase is in the right place. The bookshelf is in the right place. The books are in the right place. Okay, and all of those things are done and I'm better off overall for the long run than I would be if I had said, oh, well, there's no place to put these things. Let me just set them aside, which means that they just stay clutter. But now those books are no longer clutter. The bookshelf is in its actual final home and the suitcase is put away in its real home. See what I'm saying? So that is how this process works. It's what it looks like to actually do this when you get to a space and you're like, oh, this space isn't perfect. Oh, this space isn't perfect either. I'm just doing what needs to be done for this item that I'm taking out of the space that's the space I'm working on, which is the garage. Yes, it had three steps in that process, but ultimately I got a box of books out of the garage and that is my goal. Now I'm back to the garage and working on that. And my whole house is overall much better because the suitcase is no longer in some random place. The bookshelf that never should have been in that space in the entryway is now out of that space and that space is clear and now the books are in the right place. Okay. So when I go looking for one of those books, I'm going to go first to this exact space and I'm going to find it there. All right. Okay. I know it can feel a little confusing if you have no idea what I'm talking about. If you don't know what the no mess method is, go watch this video. It's a 30 minute video, but it's where I talk through the process and actually how it all works together to get a space declutter and get my books. Organizing for the rest of us has pictures that show you this is the process and this is what it works like. This is how it works. Um, and then in decluttering at the speed of life, I apply the five step process to all the areas of your home and talk you through all of the reasons slash excuses that you have why it might not work in your home. It'll work. I promise it's guaranteed to work if I followed this process. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Bye.